it is a leading example in North America and indeed to the world of what we can do when we put partners together and put a lot of innovative thought and creative teams together to uh, come up with something that is a, indeed a showcase to the world. For Climate Change Central, it will only be truly successful if this gets implemented on a, on a, on a wide scale. Uh, it's, it's, as a pilot, it's very exciting, but our intent is that anything that we get involved with it has to be able to be replicated or built on. And so for us, the measure of success will be other communities growing out of this uh, as, the, as the first starting place in North America. Thank you very much. screen where it shows the solar collector system. Um, the collectors are there and uh, you can see the, uh, see, the, see the pumps. One of them is working right now showing a green rotating pumping water through the collector loop and pumping it back through that heat exchanger. It shows you the temperature difference. Right now uh, the uh, water going into the collector is at about 41 degrees Celsius coming back from the collectors at about uh, 60 degrees Celsius. So the day is just starting picking up. And then the tank, over the course of the day, gets heated up through this uh, heat exchanger. Right now, uh, top of the hot tank is at uh, 62 degrees Celsius. That's quite a bit. Uh, with the uh, simulation we did earlier, we anticipate this tank to get up to about uh, 90 plus degrees Celsius. These are really big water tanks. <laughs> transfers through this heat exchanger to the storage tanks. That's the first movement. Now coming to this heat exchanger here, it's a much smaller one, which takes the, uh, the heat from the uh, storage tanks and transfers the heat to the district heating loop, which then goes through all the homes. And, and the water goes through this set of uh, valves. The, uh, the hot water comes in, goes into the ground, goes into the borehole fields. The borehole fields is right outside the door here. So, so the hot water from the energy center uh, gets piped into uh, right out here, just a piece of green space. Underneath it's the 144 boreholes going down about 35 meters deep. Uh, there's about uh, uh, two meters of uh, uh, cover uh, above the borehole field. And just normal green space in the subdivision. Kids can play on it, you can put uh, play structure on top of it. Uh, just don't plant any big trees. The interesting thing is that the energy storage system could be used for more than just solar. It could be also be used for waste heat. It could be used for things like storing heat for heating greenhouses or being used for industrial purposes as well. So it has huge applications beyond just the residential home. And it, it, it's exciting in the fact that some of this technology is being developed and, and, and piloted here in Alberta so that could be used across the country. It's always with new technology, it's going to require some commitment on part of uh, funders to get it up and running for the first time and piloted. What will happen though is as this technology gets uh, implemented on a large scale, all the costs start to come down and if hopefully in the future there won't be any support required to do uh, a subdivision, an entire subdivision that's uh, solar heated in the future. It is a showcase and it is a, very, it is a small showcase, but it, it, it has to start somewhere. And because this one is so well done, and is such a, it's going to be such a success, that it will be the model we hope that will help uh, and drive other uh, communities and developers to try a different approach to what we, from business as usual, because we know what we're doing now has worked very successfully for us. But in order to address the issues of climate change, we need to try different approaches, and this one is a very good example.